Good morning, everyone. A time to hear and think about God's word. Before we hear God's word, let's pray together. Gracious God and Father, your word is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Today, as we hear your voice, please open up our hearts to you and strengthen us in your ways so that we may live for you. Amen. Today's reading from the Bible is from John chapter 8, starting from verse 25. Then the crowd said to Jesus, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What have I even been saying to you from the beginning? I have many things to say and to judge about you, but he who sent me in true and the things which I heard from him. These I say to the world. They didn't realize that he was speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but I say these things are the Father instructed me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone because I always do the things that are pleasing to him. As he said these things, many people came to believe in him. To the Jews, who had believed him, Jesus said, if, abi if you abide in my word, then you really are my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But they answered him, we are Abraham's descendants, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, you will be free? Jesus answered them, truly I say to you, I say to you, everyone who committed sin is a slave of sin. Now a slave doesn't belong to the family forever, but the child remains forever. So if the son set you free, you will be free indeed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, good morning, everyone. It must be very hot today. I just noticed that David took his jacket off. I know. Whew, it's hot. Whew, it must be really hot. <laughs> it's a rare event. Um, today, friends, we're looking at uh, John chapter 8, the second part of John chapter 8, and we're looking at this idea that you can see on the screen there of abiding in the word of Jesus and how the truth will set you free. So that's uh, what we're looking at today. Let's begin by preparing ourselves by praying. Father, we thank you that you are a God who speaks what is, what is true, by your very nature, because you made all things, you know how they work, and so you speak and reflect in everything that you say the truth. Father, please help us today to think about what, what that means, that the truth will set us free, and we ask that you will uh, speak to us uh, by your word, uh, through your spirit. Please convict our hearts and our minds that we would... Uh, have great confidence and gain great confidence in your word to us, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask this in his name. Amen. Now the next slide. Thank you, George. Friends, this is uh, John Hopkins University in the United States, and it is one of the most famous uh, private universities in America. 
It was established in 1876, and it has something like 20,000 students. And like every university, this university has a, a motto or a saying which really uh, explains what the university is all about. And this university's motto is in Latin, and it says this, thank you, George. It says, veritas vos liberibit. Now, can you guess what this Latin phrase means? Well, in English, it means the truth will set you free. Now, when this university says the truth will set you free, what they mean is if you come to our university, you will get such high-quality education that it will free you to be successful in your life. And it's very interesting, isn't it, that a university is using words that Jesus spoke to some Jews 2,000 years ago and they're applying it to the courses that they run at their particular university. But friends, when you think about it, I don't know if that's what Jesus meant when he first said those words to you. The truth will set you free. Was he thinking about university courses and education setting you free? I don't really think so. And this is what people like to do with this really frame, famous phrase, the truth will set you free. They love to use that phrase to, you know, push their ideas, their uh, aspirations, their own personal truth and their desires. They use this very famous phrase to really get what they want. Now, I want to give you another example of, you know, just how this sometimes works. A few years ago, I heard uh, an interview between an English pastor, a, a minister, who was gay, he was homosexual. And it was a very interesting, honest discussion. And right at the end of this, you know, really incredible talk, interview, he said these words, thank you, George. The pastor said, when I finally accepted the truth, that I was gay, then I felt free. I guess it's just like Jesus said, the truth will set you free. So this man felt this truth. He felt he was gay. And because he felt it, when he accepted that truth, everything was okay in his life. And then he turns and he uses those words from Jesus. Aha, it's just like Jesus said, the truth will set you free. Now, friends, do you think when Jesus first said those words, he was talking about our sexual feelings? Was he talking about education? Was he talking about anything else that you might think is important to you? When he first said those words, the truth will set you free. He wasn't. That's not what he was doing. He wasn't talking about us and our personal truth. He was talking about something else. So how are we to understand these very famous words, the truth will set you free? Well, as I said last week, the first thing we need to do is to understand the context or the situation that Jesus was in when he first said those words. That's the first thing we need to do. We need to understand the situation he was in before we can understand the meaning of what he said. So let's look at the context. Thank you, George. This is the situation. As Jesus said these things, many came to believe in him. So to those Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you abide in my word, then you really are my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Friends, in John chapter 7, a few weeks ago, we saw that Jesus went to the Feast of Tabernacles in secret. The festival was seven days long. He went on day one in secret. And he only began to teach on day three of the feast. But during those last three days, 
he was very, very busy teaching the crowds. He was there at the Festival of Light at night. He was there at the uh, water ceremony in the morning. And he taught all day, every day in the temple. And there were so many arguments that he had with the religious teachers. You might remember there were arguments about, you know, his father, his authority. There were arguments about where Jesus came from and where he was going to. And there were arguments and on and on and on it went for three days. But here in the second half of John chapter 8, we are told that in the middle of all those arguments, some people heard Jesus speak and they believed in him. In other words, they wanted to know more. They wanted to explore more. They were interested in following Jesus and becoming his disciples. And friends, it is to those people and only those people that Jesus brings them aside and he says those famous words to them. The truth will set you free. That's what these words are all about. You see, I think Jesus is helping these potential followers to understand what it means to be his disciple. And he's trying to teach them what will happen to them in their lives as they live their lives as his disciples. And so this is what Jesus says. Thank you, George. To those Jews, only those Jews who had believed him, Jesus says, if you abide in my word, then you really are my disciples. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now, friends, as you can see, there are really four parts in that sentence. And those parts follow one after the other. And so the first thing that he says, thank you, George, is if you abide in my word. Now, if you do that, then this will happen, thanks, George. Number two, then you really are my disciples. And if you really are my disciples, then this will happen, thanks, George. Then you will know the truth. And if you know the truth, then this will happen, thanks, George. The truth will set you free. You see, friends, Jesus is talking to people who are interested in following him. And like the good teacher that he is, he wants to teach them how to follow him. And he also wants to teach them what will happen in their lives when they do follow him. And so he begins with those words, if you abide in my word. Now, friends, as you know, there are many different types of Bible translations and many translations don't use the word abide. They use something else. So, for example, some of them say things like, if you, uh, want, if you are my disciple, you keep my word or you will... Remain in my word, you will seek my word, you will obey my word. These are all words used instead of abide. But either way, what Jesus is trying to say, if you want to be my disciple, my word needs to live in you. It needs to abide in you. It needs to be in your mind in your spirit, in your life. My word needs to abide and live in you. You must live with my word in your life. Now it's time to be honest. Friends, it doesn't matter if you come to church every week. It doesn't matter if you call yourself a Christian. Jesus is saying here, if his word doesn't abide in you, 
in your mind, your spirit, your life. If that's not happening, if that word doesn't abide in you, then you're not in the process. You're not involved in that process that takes you all the way to freedom. That's what Jesus is saying. If you want to be my disciple, my word must live in you. And that word will have results. It will bring God's truth and freedom into your life. And friends, we don't even need to be perfect. We just need to be willing And really, being a disciple of Jesus is a very active and dynamic thing because we are always learning from him. You see, being a disciple of Jesus is not like going to uni. So we heard about Steph going to uni. It's not like that. When you go to uni, you know, you go to a lecture, maybe. You know, you maybe write a few notes. Then you go home and you just forget about it all until exam time. That's university. Being a disciple of Jesus is not like that. It's not like that at all. In fact, being a disciple of Jesus is much more like being an apprentice here in Australia. You know, an apprentice plumber or, or an apprentice electrician. You know, in Australia, if you're a, 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 an apprentice, what you do is, you know, four days a week, you work. One day a week, you go to school, TAFE. And so really you do most of your learning while you work on the job. And friends, being a disciple of Jesus is more like that. You know, you come to church once a week, but you keep learning every single day day as you live your life with Jesus in your life as you become a disciple of Jesus as his word abides and lives in you that's what being a disciple of Jesus looks like now friends this week our family had some very exciting news because Noah has now got a job He's left high school, he's got a job, and he has become an apprentice electrician. So congratulations, Noah. My friends, Noah's four-year apprenticeship is going to change his life. It really will. Starting with, he has to be at work at 6.30 in the morning every day. That's tough for a teenager. That's really hard. And not only that, he has to go to work, you know, wearing a really bright uniform, high vis, and he has to wear a, a hard, you know, helmet and safety glasses, and he has to carry all these tools everywhere he goes. And every day, he has to follow his boss, the head electrician. He needs to walk with him, you know, follow him, listen to him, watch him very closely and do everything this guy says. That's what an apprentice does. And then one day after, you know, a couple of years, the head electrician will say, Noah, it's your turn. Go ahead. You do the job. And he'll watch him. And then he'll give him some advice on how to do it better next time. And friends, this process, you know, is a long one. It goes on and on and on until that great day when the apprentice does the work of an electrician in exactly the same way the boss does the work of the electrician. And friends, it's exactly the same being an apprentice of Jesus. We learn every day from him, from his word 
abiding in us. We practice doing what he says. We learn, we get better. We might not be perfect, but we get better and better and better until we do what the master does. And we do what the master does in the way that he does it. With purity and goodness and power. And friends, Jesus says that as we live like this, as his students, as his apprentices, as we spend our days with his word in us, doing whatever we do with him in our lives, when we live like that, then the most amazing thing happens. The third thing happens, thank you, George. Number three, then you will know the truth. The day will come when you will know God's truth. In other words, we will be, we'll be able to identify for ourselves that God's ways are right. They will be real to us. We'll see them. We'll be able to say, to say yes, I have learned from my own experience that God's ways are true. That day will come. Now, friends, when, I, when we say, I have learned that God's ways are true, what are we trying to say? What do we mean? I mean, if someone stops you in the street and says, look, I've heard that you think that God's ways are true, you know, how do you know that? What would you say? What could you say to explain that truth that, that you know is now true? Well, quite simply, we could say, I know God's ways are true because I have learned that God's ways work. That's why they're true. That's why God's ways are true, because God's ways work. They work best in this world. His ways are best for us and for others. And God's truth works best in this world because in the beginning God made the world and everything in it. So he knows what he's talking about. And so everything he says is a perfect description of the world that he made and that we live in. That's why it's true. Because it works best in this world. And this means we can depend on God's word and have confidence in what he says. And we can act in this world, in whatever situation we are in, to do God's good in our lives. Friends, that's the truth we will learn. That God's ways are best. And friends, truth is very important. For example, if you're an apprentice electrician, one of the first things you have to learn very, very quickly is that the red wire always gets attached with another red wire. Because if you attach a red wire to a different colour, it won't work. Or worse still, it will kill you. See, friends, truth is very important. It's all around you. You use it every day. You rely on it to make big decisions, little decisions. And in the middle, God's truth stands there and says, follow me. Follow my wisdom. And friends, those silly people who say, there's no truth. They are being very foolish. Because the truth is that we all need to make real decisions in our lives. We need to decide what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And if we don't have the truth to do that with, 
then all we will have left are our feelings and our desires. And we all know if we just follow our feelings and our desires, if we just do what we want to do, we will hardly ever do God's good in this world. So friends, don't listen to people who say there is no truth. Because having God's truth, knowing God's ways, will help you to live in this world in the best way possible. And friends, the wonderful truth is if you live like this with the word of Jesus abiding in you, you're a trainee apprentice with Jesus, you know the truth. If you live like that, then the most amazing thing will happen to you. This, thank you, George, number four. The truth will set you free. Aha! There's the phrase that everyone misuses. Finally. The truth will set you free. But friends, what is freedom? What is freedom? What does it mean to be free in your life? Well, some people think that freedom is like this. Thank you, George. Some people, modern people, many of them think that uh, freedom, to be free, is to do something like this, to do what you want to do. Friends, is this goldfish free? Well, you could say yes, couldn't you? You know, finally, after years of living in this tiny glass goldfish bowl, the goldfish goes, that's it, I'm getting out of here, I'm tired of this, and whoosh, Free as a bird, flying through the air. Is the goldfish free? Well, not really, because pretty soon it's going to come down on the floor. Then maybe a little bit, and then pretty soon it's dead. So friends, if freedom is not doing what you want to do when you want to do it, what is it? What is freedom? What is the freedom that God's truth will lead you to? Well, in the Bible, I think this is what freedom is. Thank you, George. Freedom is this. Freedom is living the way that you were designed to live. That is what the Bible teaches. True freedom is living the way you were originally designed to live. And so, friends, who are the free people? Are they the ones who do whatever they feel like doing whenever they want to do it? Are they the free people? Well, Jesus says no. As he pulls aside these interested followers, he says, let me tell you about the freedom that I will give you. And the freedom that I will give you happens at the end of a long process and you begin with accepting my word. You begin by living and abiding with my word every single day. And as you do that, you're my apprentice. And as you keep going and keep practicing and making mistakes and getting better, as you keep doing that, you will see for yourself that God's truth is best. And when you see that, you will be free. Because you will want to be what God made you to be. That is freedom. And friends, God created us to be people who love and enjoy him. And God created us to be people who reject 
the dead end of sin. That's what we were made to be. That is what a human is firing on all cylinders. Loving God, loving people, living in his truth and freedom, doing good in this world. Friends, Jesus says that all this comes when we trust Jesus so much that we live with his word and we become his students. When we do that, we learn God's truth, God's ways. We realise that they are best for us and then there is no stopping you. You're free to be what God meant you to be. And friends, that life is free because only that life can bring what you were made for. Only that type of life as a disciple of Jesus can bring into your life all those things that God designed you for. Like God's love. God's peace, God's joy, God's patience, God's goodness, God's gentleness, God's faithfulness, God's self-control. Friends, these are things that are made for us and they come into our lives when we become disciples, followers, students, apprentices, of Jesus. Friends, that's the truth. And that truth will set you free. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these very special words of Jesus. We thank you that they're not about us and what we want or what we feel, but they are instructions and descriptions of what happens when we commit ourselves to you and abide in your word and begin to learn and practice to do what you say. Father, we thank you for this wonderful invitation that when we live like that, slowly, we begin to understand that your truth, that your ways are good and right. And we walk into them voluntarily, enthusiastically, knowing that we will walk in a life that is like no other and that we were made for. And so we ask this week that you will work in our hearts, in our spirits, in our minds to convict us of this truth so that we may be free. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we have uh, one discussion question. Thank you, George. Uh, I would like you, in your, uh, with the people near you, try and summarise, you know, the following words that Jesus said to that small group of people. Try and say these words in your own words. So Jesus said, if you abide in my word, then you really are my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So try and summarise that you know, in your own way. Uh, you have five minutes. Enjoy your conversation, those at home as well, and we'll come back in a few minutes. Thank you. Let's pray together. Father God, We bring glory to you and thanks for the word of truth that we learnt today. In that, Jesus setting us free from slave, from being in slavery to sin. By death on a cross, on our behalf for us, for eternal life with you. And to this, giving us the opportunity to become your disciple. Help us, Father, to trust and abide in the word of truth that you have given us and in Jesus who sets us free 
And in this freedom, help us to love one another in truth and freedom, teach each other in truth and freedom, support one another in truth and freedom, to walk with Jesus daily and to continue to grow in maturity. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.